my friends over at Kenosha County Eye published this in March, March 22nd, to be honest with you. And it concerns the background of Randall Volar. He is the alleged victim of Crystal Kaiser's gunshot. And, of course, she is up for murder, and this is going to have a major impact on Kyle Rittenhouse. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. The title, Investigative Police Report Released for the First Time of Accused Pedophile That Was Murdered by Crystal Kaiser. Got to be careful with the word murdered there, Kenosha County I. That's a legal conclusion, but that's okay. This article has been edited since its original publication. I would like to know what date it was edited, but we won't worry about that. The Kenosha County Eye is the first media outlet to receive a copy of the investigative police report of Randy Volar. Warning, this article contains extremely graphic details that my followers can handle no problem. And so it begins, 15-year-old girl calls 911. Before I begin, let me explain why this is so important to Kyle. Crystal Kaiser is going to be going up for trial here, probably in the summertime maybe. Her case is being appealed right now over a technicality. We, I went over that in pretty good detail in one of my other videos. Essentially, she's making a claim that she should not be prosecuted for murder because she was a sex trafficking victim. In my opinion, I don't think she's going to get very far with that. But that's another matter altogether. But can you imagine the carnage if Crystal Kaiser is convicted and Kyle Rittenhouse isn't. Keep in mind, Crystal Kaiser is not a household name right now, but because of the Kyle Rittenhouse case, it's going to be. Because the world is going to turn and focus their eyes on this case of a young black female of the same age as Kyle, and they're going to be demanding an acquittal. And if she is convicted, never minding the heartwarming stories and, and and excruciating pain that she has gone through. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Her life has been a real mess. But if she is convicted and Kyle is acquitted, Antifa is going to rain down on Kenosha. There won't be a Kenosha. If you look on a map, there will be just a brown spot where Kenosha used to be. Or maybe it should be black for you know because it's charred. Because they will burn that city down. It's going to be proof to them that there is a white privilege. After all, Crystal Kaiser, a black female who's a rape victim, couldn't even claim self-defense. She was being raped at the time. And then there's old Kyle Rittenhouse, white kid, walking around with his AR-15, shooting people left and right. And he, get, he gets acquitted. Oh, my God. I can see the tweets now. It's going to be horrendous. And so... If you're a Kyle Rittenhouse fan, you kind of hope for Crystal Kaiser to be acquitted here. However, I'm not so sure she will be. And it has nothing to do with race. Let's read. On February 12, 2018, a 15-year-old girl, KW, called 911 just after midnight. She told dispatchers that she was given drugs by a man who was trying to kill her. Police noted that the young girl was acting like she was indeed under the influence of one or more drugs. KW was wearing an unzipped coat and a blue bra with no shirt. And keep in mind, it's cold outside, so this is in February in Wisconsin. She told the two KPD officers that Volar gave her marijuana and alcohol, but today he gave her LSD. She was having a bad trip and called 911 inside the home. After learning that she called the police, she stated that he was going to grab a gun. KW ran outside and down the road where police picked her up. She spent a lot of time at his house because she knew she was wanted there. Volar had an affinity for younger girls, which she thought was weird. He met girls on Tagged and Backpage, 
She said Volar had numerous videos in his home of him having sex with children. KW had a juvenile warrant out for Milwaukee, which she was arrested for. So that kind of sucks. You have a juvenile warrant arrest. You get there. You get chased out of a house by a man out to kill you. You turn yourself into police and they arrest you for it. But I guess the rule is the rule. I mean, if you have a warrant out for your arrest, that's that's what happens, I, I guess. Detectives interview of KW at Milwaukee County Detention Center. On February 21st, 2018, KPD Detective May was assigned to investigate this case as there were allegations of child sexual abuse and child pornography. He drove to Milwaukee to interview KW again. This time she gave police a large amount of information about Volar, and it's not going to be good. KW met Volar at Juneteenth Festival in Milwaukee when she was 14. Randy paid her 250 bucks for a night of sex. KW described numerous occasions when she was paid to have sex with Volar. KW and Volar talked about her young age. He knew she was 14, and she told him to find girls his own age. He told her that he liked to have sex with younger girls because they're, okay, I'm not going to go into that. I'll let you read that on your own. I don't want to get any strikes. KW said that every time they had sex, Volar filmed it on his cell phone. He would later show these videos to her along with videos of him having sex with other underage girls. KW told the detective that Volar had a sizable amount of money, $200,000 in the bank that he had earned from trading Bitcoin. KW said that Volar even took her to meet his mother at dinner when she was 14 or 15. Okay, that's, that's even weirder. I mean, what do you say to your mom, like, this is a young black female, 14 years old. Like, how do you introduce this girl to your mother? Like, I can't even think of it. I, I don't know how you'd do that. At that time, KW told Detective May that Volar was having a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old girl assumed to be Crystal Kaiser. The detective then asked KW to give him details about the inside of Volar's residence in Kenosha, which she did in great detail. Okay. So it doesn't sound like she's making this stuff up. All right, now we got a search warrant going on here. The next day, armed with all this new information, Kenosha police detectives asked the court for a search warrant of Volar's home and vehicle. It was signed that same day. About seven KPD officers drove to Volar's residence for a knock and announce search warrant. Oh, I can hear it now. Why didn't they do a no knock warrant like they did with Breonna Taylor? They didn't do a no-knock warrant because there was going to be almost no chance that he was going to be able to destroy all that evidence in the short period of time it would take for them to get inside. And he didn't have like a hostage inside. But that ain't going to matter to them. Police knocked and announced, but Volar didn't come to the door. The door was breached with a ram. Volar was inside and taken into custody. During the search that lasted more than an hour, Volar was very vocal and concerned about getting a password for access to his massive amount of Bitcoin. Volar agreed and then changed his mind to speak with police a few times. All right, so this is where things get kind of dicey, and it's going to involve a certain district attorney named Michael Gravely, and he's going to come under a lot of fire. And that's going to affect Kyle Rittenhouse. KPD recovered dozens of hard drives, thumb drives, SD cards, and DVDs containing dozens and dozens of videos and photos containing child pornography, many of them homemade by the defendant participating in the sex. Sixteen of these pornographic videos. Oh, uh, Kenosha County High, you're not supposed to start sentences with numbers. Got to do a little correction there. Sixteen of these pornographic videos were already in the NCMEC, uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children database, and identified as confirmed child pornography videos. Six of the videos had identified victims. There were hundreds, their emphasis, of videos containing child pornography found in Volar's home. They also found needles and drugs. KPD Detective May released Volar on a summons and complaint. Whoa, let me read that one to you again, because it might have gotten past you. K 
KPD Detective May released Volar on a summons and complaint. It is unknown if he had contact with the DA's office in February of 2018. KPD later stated their case to charge him with five felony sex crimes. With a treasure trove of evidence, Michael Gravely's office never charged Volar with any crime. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, Michael Gravely, it's going to get rough for you. Keep in mind, most people don't know this. They think of Michael Gravely, fighter for justice. He's prosecuting that evil bastard white supremacist Kyle Rittenhouse. Go, Mikey, go. Fight for the truth. Yeah, okay. Wait till the trial comes around. And this is all going to start to surface. It won't be an issue in the trial, but it's going to be a part of the periphery. And it's going to get really ugly for him. They're going to want to know... How is it you never charged this dude with this crime? Keep in mind, Randall Volar is white. You don't see a connection to Kyle Rittenhouse? You don't see how that's going to affect Kyle Rittenhouse's case? Hmm? Okay, you hang on to that. The evidence. Video of Volar, an unknown black female who appeared to be mid-teens wearing a pink bra and panties. They get naked and have oral and vaginal sex in Volar's home. Video shows Volar videotaping himself while holding his phone in what appears to be his bedroom while a female black girl who appears to be 12 to 14 years old gives him oral sex. Second video of same girl from number two on bed having vaginal sex and her giving him oral sex. Okay, you get the idea. I'll let you read this on your own if you want. I'll paste a link in the description below. And there's something to do here with a period. Ooh, I'll definitely let you read that one on your own. Number 15, Western Digital Hard Drive with hundreds of videos of child pornography involving girls that appear to be between 12 and 16. The description of these videos is too graphic to post here. Oh, my God. I thought what I had read before was pretty bad. They are in the report linked below. No, I don't want to see that. No. Okay, so here is the conclusion and opinion. Now, this is going to be Kenosha County Eye's uh, input here. So this is not part of the official report. Volar was accused of committing some terrible and unthinkable crimes. The evidence was abundant. Each conviction for child pornography carried a minimum sentence of three years in prison. He was easily facing life in prison. Many precious days passed from when the DA was asked to charge Volar to when he was murdered by one of his trafficked victims, Crystal Kaiser. Why did Gravely allow all this time to pass with no action? Gravely told the Kenosha News, and I think the Kenosha News is a different newspaper. Maybe it's Kenosha County Eye, but I believe that's probably a different paper. Gravely said that prosecutor followed up with the police department saying the case was not yet ready for charging and gave police a request for additional information. So all that video and all that stuff wasn't enough to charge him. The follow-up arrived on our office on June 5th, the same day Volar's body was discovered. I suspect that Volar would have been charged that day or the day after, Gravely said. Boy, that's pretty weak. It says here, we don't believe Gravely. He has egg on his face again. Okay, I'm kind of interested in knowing what the other times are, but okay. Now one person is dead and another is facing life in prison because of his office's incompetence. This isn't the first time that his office may be responsible for a death due to inaction. Oh, okay, I'm going to check that out. Maybe that's what they were talking about. Open that up. Gravely has now been elected twice without an opponent. Will someone come forward to challenge Gravely for our community? Kaiser's attorney, Jennifer Bias, didn't respond to our request for comment, and of course, neither did Mike Gravely. The article has been updated to correct an ambiguous statement in Detective May's report. He wrote on February 23rd, he, Volar, was charged with the following. We, ble 
We believe this was a clerical mistake, and he meant to write booked for the following. We originally wrote that the DA's office told May to release Volar, but we now know May, w- but we now know May released Volar on his own. If he was indeed charged, as the report states, the DA must have made the call to release him. 102 days was removed because we don't know exactly when the DA was notified of this case. Kenosha police wanted to make sure the record was clear, and we thank them for following up. Okay, so there you have it. Um, this is all going to come to a head during the case of Crystal Kaiser. I don't know when that's going to move forward. They still have that issue with the appeals court, so they have to wait for that to come back. And I don't know how long it takes for these people to do this. But regardless, I have a feeling that Crystal Kaiser is probably in a little bit of trouble here. And again, if she gets convicted, the wrath will fall down on Kyle. People will be demanding a conviction of Kyle, regardless of his guilt or innocence, which kind of sounds like the way it is now. So maybe things won't change that much after all. Like my video and subscribe to my channel.